just one thing I wanted to pick up as a theme that cut across both of your um, sets of comments is the question, the way uh, Effie phrased it is invited or forced. Because I think implied in um, both contact tracing and the idea of certifying immunity, there seems to be an ambiguity in here. Um, you know, at some degree, it will be voluntary, um, but that in some some circumstances may be required. And I wonder if each of you could say just a little bit more about that. What I'm thinking about is like very practical applications. So, for example, when your students return to school in the fall, right? Well, this um, you know. This is, I think there are now you know, vaccines that are required in certain school districts for students to return. Or I'm also thinking another application might be um, access to public transportation. Um, what are we imagining that we might have to either have a, uh, you know, an app that says we're participating in this system and we're abiding by it or some kind of certification. So I wonder if I go to Effie first and then, and then to Jeff, just on this invited versus forced and where you see this, this theme going. Well, that's a great question. And I think um, what um, we still haven't seen how this is, well, we maybe have a glimpse of how this is playing out. Um, I actually was talking to somebody in South Korea the other day uh, and what I heard there, and it's not about, you know, going back to school or taking public transportation, but it's about travel. If you come into the country, um, you could have two options. One is to self quarantine for two weeks. Uh, or quarantine someplace, maybe not necessarily self-quarantine, maybe in a facility. The other would be that you are agreeing to download the app and, you know, through that have control, we have control of your whereabouts and your contacts. So you can be given an analog option and a digital option. And maybe on, at the moment we're not giving a serological option because the science is not advanced enough and it's this discussion, but we're seeing models of, of that form of, I don't know what you want to call that, uh, voluntary versus forced. You know, you've given two options to choose from. Um, so I'm, I'm suspecting we'll see uh, variations or combinations of those things. Um, but at the same time, I think in some countries probably forcing this would be really difficult given the cultures and uh, legal frameworks that uh, even in the cases of emergencies, uh, they cannot give so much license for enforcement. Uh, but, and I'm speaking particularly for contact tracing. Um, so for example, the many European countries that are discussing the digital contact tracing applications, they claim that this would be only a opt, uh, an opt in sort of voluntary on voluntary basis and my worry a little bit is let's say that countries are keen to roll this out just also in order to test the waters on a voluntary basis the measures are not successful things are not working out the disease continues to spread what's going to be next and whether you know then we can move on to maybe um proposing these solutions in ways that we're forced to accept them. And what my main worries there is if these solutions remain half cooked as they are right now, in my opinion, um, and you know, as we heard from Jeff, but also what I see in contact tracing, I, I wonder how, how we could ever justify forcing them upon people um, given what we know um, at this point about their efficacy in solving our problem. I think it's important to say um, contact tracing is not is not voluntary, right? That's that's a public health measure that we um, use for tracking down infectious disease. What we're talking about is whether the information that we might have on our mobile phones, for instance, to aid contact tracing should be voluntarily shared. Right? Those I think are kind of an impor important differences, and so. That's, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out ways to help do things that are traditionally um, carried out in the name of public health. And there's often a tension in the context of civil liberties and public health about, you know, sort of how voluntary things um, can be when we're talking about the interest, not of the individual, but the, the public health interest. And, and that's where we tend to shift the line about how much a voluntary and, and private um, should continue when we're trying to to serve what is the 
the greater good of the public's health. Um, in the, your, your question made me think of a really important distinction here to make, which is there may be different answers to the question about voluntary versus required, depending on the context. So you can imagine employers saying, you can't come back to work unless we know your immunity status or you can't come back to school was your example, which I think you know, in some sense is very relevant for Effie and I because we both work at universities. And we, you can't socially distance if you're a, a student in a dormitory. It just isn't possible to do that. So we can't have students back in the environment if the virus is still circulating unless we know more about them. And so you might say, yeah, we need to know your immunity status, but maybe it doesn't then say, and if you're not immune, you don't get to come back, but rather if you aren't immune, we will create certain accommodations to protect you. So it's information to help us make sure you can do the thing that you want to do or that we need you to do. And I think that's, that's an important way to put it. Now, in the United States, we have something called the Americans with Disabilities Act, which is meant to create to recognize that certain people need accommodations to perform their jobs or go to school or, or tasks of daily life. And so one of the questions this might invoke is whether non-immunity is effectively a new form of disability that ought to be accommodated under federal law. We, so not just you need to share it, but you want to share it because it allows the invocation of rights that you have to be protected and allow you to do the thing that you, you need to do. Go to work, earn money to you know, pay your rent, buy food, protect your family, go to school. And so I think there are ways in which we should think about this as helping to serve the interests of the individual as well as the public's health. So that was a bit of a ramble and I went from one end of, well, we don't worry about privacy and public health to saying, wait a second, this may be the way to actually serve the individual's interests. Um, and we need to think about it across that full spectrum.